Welcome everybody to my new series, Forgotten Legends. In this series, I'll be talking about characters of fiction that either were big in their day and then faded away, or who should have been bigger than they were. For my first episode, I thought I would start off with a personal favorite. The year was 1991. A good year for Capcom. Street Fighter II was eating up quarters and arcades everywhere. Mike Hagar of Final Fight was on the cover of Gamist. Sega put out the first Sonic game, and Nintendo released The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Also, it's on the IKEA was born. With all these amazing new games on the market, some games kind of got brushed to the side and quickly forgotten. One such game was a sci fi beat em up called Captain Commando. Now, Captain Commando, in my opinion, is one of the greatest beat em ups of all time. It's actually one of my all-time favorite games. So, let me tell you a bit about this wonderful game. Captain Commando was Capcom's homage to classic American sci-fi magazines and shows, and artists like Frank R. Paul, who did a lot of work with Amazing Stories, Science Fiction Magazine, and even did the cover of the very first Marvel comic. The game is set in a crime-ridden future in the year 2026, where a superhero named Captain Commando, assisted by the other three members of the Commando team, rise up to protect the Earth and all the galaxy from a gang of super-powered criminals led by the massive Skumocide, who is called Genocide in Japan. The majority of the game takes place in Metro City, the same city where Mike Hagar was mayor during the Final Fight series. It is easy to make the assumption that Hagar died one way or another prior to the start of the game, as he is not featured at any point, and this takes place several decades after any Final Fight game. The last two stages of the game stay true to the sci-fi theme, and put you into outer space via an enemy spaceship. The game had a variety of enemies, Everything from silly henchmen to ninjas, to electric chicks and power armors, which you could steal. The bosses were pretty sweet too, and rather strange. The variants of Strom, Boots, the Monster, a doppelganger simply named Doppel, a big old samurai thing, and much more. But this show isn't about forgotten video games. It's about forgotten characters. So. Let's learn some more about the man himself, Captain Commando. Cap is the hero of this game, and leader of the Commando team. Besides his natural gifts of a powerful mind and strong body, he also uses his energy gloves, capable of shooting mighty bolts of fire and electricity. His sure killing technique is the Captain Collider. By striking the ground with his energy gloves, it causes an electric shock which kills everyone around him. Captain Commando's dash attacks are Captain Cannon, also known as Captain Fire, which torches the enemy with a blast of flames, and Captain Kick, which can hit several enemies at once, whether on the ground or in the air. Captain Commando can also grab his opponent and kick their stomach or throw their whole body, other things he uses are the Captain Goggles, Protector, Gauntlet, and the Captain Boots. His Captain Goggles can help him to identify a criminal's face at a distance of two kilometers by comparing it with a non-specified database. His Captain Protector is made of super tough material called, <laughs> get this, Captanium, <coughs> which makes it stand up to one trillion degree heat. His Captain Gauntlet multiplies Captain's power 48 times, making it easy for him to smash a thick iron plate. And his Captain Boots can make it possible for him to take a 100 meter fall with no injuries to himself, nor with any damage to the boots. Now, I want you to think about all of that for just a moment. Those abilities and that equipment, along with his allies, this was clearly the making of a great hero. Now, Capcom never really expanded on this character because 
he only had one game. But it's very easy to see they had big plans for him. But for whatever reason, whether it was poor sales or beat-em-ups going out of style and being replaced with fighter games, Cap never really got his chance to shine. However, you can kind of see the direction they were taking. He was sort of like Iron Man and Captain America in one. At least, that's the idea you get when you hear powerful mind and strong body. I theorize that Capcom had originally intended to make Cap some sort of genius, and maybe even reveal in a sequel that he had designed and built his own equipment. Another theory I have, which most Capcom fans will agree on with me, is that Capcom was originally going to make Captain Commando their company mascot. I mean, come on, the abbreviation for his name is Capcom. There's also an old poster for the game that showed the word Captain, written in the same fashion as the Capcom logo, and then in the corner, where the Capcom logo would go, was a new Capcom logo, written in the fashion of the Captain Commando title screen and title on the box art. Several years down the road, after beat-em-ups had basically become a thing of the past, and crossovers getting popular, our hero returned for Marvel vs. Capcom! In this amazing crossover fighter game, we got to see some incredible new abilities, enhanced old ones, and a glimpse of what Capcom wanted our hero to become. He was stronger, faster, more powerful, and could combine his powers with the rest of the Commando team. Captain Commando had some of the strongest combos in the game, took damage like a champ, and his Captain Sword Hyper Combo could hit opponents basically no matter where they were on the screen. His ending in the first MVC was kind of a tribute to the ending of his game, which <laughs> certainly had this Captain Commando fan grinning from ear to ear. He returned for the second MVC, but in number three. There is a poster on the wall in the Metro City stage showing many heroes, and one such hero is Captain Commando. And over his head, he is marked as slain. So here dies the legacy of Captain Commando, before it truly began. Captain Commando is one of those truly underrated games, with an underrated hero who should have gotten a better chance to shine like the star he was meant to be. This is why Cap was chosen to be the very first Forgotten Legend. <laughs>